Welcome to Christianity, Culture and Communication, the module that is all about connecting the good news of the Christian Christmas story with those that have yet to make sense of whether the Christmas story uh, is anything relevant for their lives. Summary lectures. So if you're listening, uh, you would have most likely sat in the lectures because I don't think anyone actually missed them. But this is a reminder of what we went through. So the module introduction to the module. Please, for goodness sake, if you are struggling with uh, what this module is all about and you need reminding, look at your module handbook. It is the place where you are going to find absolutely everything that you need to know for this module. Uh, but I'm still going to go through and just remind you what we went through. Uh, we're going to look at theological themes. We're going to look at creative writing and communication uh, with our guest lecturer, David Wadsworth. My goodness, he is so good. And uh, he was a wonderful blessing to us. Uh, we're going to uh, have some practical in connecting the Christmas story people. And then we're going to reflect on what we did and how it worked. Uh, on Sunday, we're going to look at the vehicle and the message and look at creativity and connecting. Uh, we're going to design a beer mat uh, and, and just try and get into the heads of those that we're seeking to reach. You know, does this Christmas story make sense with the language that we use? And then lastly, we're going to have some discussion, questions and prayer together before having a treat with Ben Kessel coming to remind us of our call and how God wants to use us and for us to dream. So for the first lecture, uh, we looked at a scene from the Nativity by the BBC. The BBC put on uh, a very moving uh, it was a four part series on the nativity and uh, for those of us uh, who were in the lecture um, half of us were actually crying <laughs> it was so moving just watching the scene and uh, it was a wonderful reminder that this story that we've become so familiar with is a story that really included real people real characters this is a story that is recorded in history and it's a story of the birth of the messiah in the module handbook you will see that i've given a summary that christmas is an opportunity for us to proclaim from the rooftops what the gospel is really all about, that Jesus is God incarnate. He is the great rescue plan for a broken and fallen world. The module aims to encourage you to communicate Christmas and the nativity in creative, relevant and effective ways. Now, during this process, you will find out more about different groups of peoples with a view to framing the message of the gospel with an approach that will make sense for them. Remember, good news needs to be understood as good news. Otherwise, it is no news, which is bad news. This is a theme throughout your studies that if the good news is not making sense to those that we are seeking to reach, then it is no news. And that is bad news. So as evangelists and trainee pioneers and evangelists, we need to be mindful of how our message is connecting with people. If it's just gobbledygook or Christianese, then it isn't connecting with people. So be prepared to do hands on, be hands on with this module because your assessment is all about being hands on. It's all about how you were able to connect the Christmas story with those around you. And you're going to work out, well, who is it that I'm going to actually share the Christmas story with? How am I going to make sense 
of the Christmas story for those that I'm going to reach, be it young people, people who are homeless, people out on the street, shoppers, are they going to be people in a cafe? So you're going to consider your context and to help you with that, uh, we're going to head into Birmingham and uh, we're going to reach people. Birmingham is absolutely brimming with different cultures, religions, people um, who are very different to our very own context in Chester or wherever we are based in the UK. So your assessment will be all about how you engage with people with a Christmas story and then you will do a short essay on how it went and what worked and what didn't. Now this is an opportunity for you to learn new things and to do new things but more importantly this is an opportunity for someone who may have never heard the true meaning of Christmas, hear it for the first time. Now this is my prayer for you, each one of you as you engage in this module and the challenge of connecting with a group of people, the story of Jesus Christ being given to this world as the saviour. In the, the lectures, uh, we are going to have an opportunity to do a freeze frame. And uh, for those of you who sat in the lectures back uh, in um, earlier on, uh, in January, hang on, what month are we? No, this was in October. Woohoo! Uh, no, it wasn't, it's was November. <laughs> you would have done a freeze frame. And uh, there was a prize of pigs in blanket tea for the winning freeze frame. Uh, it was just a, 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 a reminder to us of the different scenes set out within um, Luke and also within Matthew. The assessment, uh, it's so important that you know that the portfolio can be creative. Please, here's a plan for you, but I'm really looking for creativity a way in which people can really get what it means to be uh, a follower of Jesus and to do something um, uh, perhaps with your practical element to the portfolio. Then you're going to reflect on it. What worked? What didn't work? Uh, what could you have done better? What would you have done um, now that you'd done it? <laughs> Uh, what kind of feedback did you get? And then here, uh, it's just from your module handbook, the assessment criteria, just so that you are really clear of what I'm looking for as I mark your portfolio and your reflection. Now, the main differences between Matthew and Luke, of course, Mark does not include the nativity story and you could argue that John does include the nativity story in a very big way. John says in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh so the nativity story is included in the the synopsis of the incarnation that wonderful understanding that Jesus has always been God is God but now has become Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew uh, champions Joseph, champions the genealogy in showing that, that Jesus is a very, very special person and he's someone who uh, is uh, born from very special people. Uh, his genealogy uh, you will see within the lectures and also the paper that is on the module uh, resource page uh, is, is vital for us to understand that Jesus just isn't an ordinary person. Just as Matthew champions Joseph, Luke champions Mary. And this is Mary's story. It includes songs, it includes poetry, unlike Matthew. Uh, Luke wonderfully gives a synopsis of what is to come. He shows us that his gospel is a gospel for the poor. How do we know that? Well, he shows us that um, the shepherds are included. In fact, they're a major scene within the nativity story in Luke's gospel. Luke shows us that his gospel is for women. 
How do we know this? Well, whenever a man is mentioned in Luke's gospel, a woman is mentioned. And also a woman is really featured throughout the story, the story of Mary. But we have Zacharias and Elizabeth. We have Simeon and Anna. Matthew's gospel, well, that's written for a primarily a Jewish audience. So Matthew wants to prove to his audience that Jesus is the coming Messiah. He, is, he has been prophesied about. So Matthew includes loads of Hebrew scripture to show that Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecies written about him uh, throughout the Hebrew scriptures. So lecture one, theological themes. Paper that I've written. The theological themes and background to the nativity, there are five elements that I want to bring to you. And that's that the Christmas story is without a doubt the Christianizing of a pagan festival or festivals. They are subversive stories. They're stories that directly challenge the Roman occupation. And they're also parabolic overtures. So they give a summary of what we should expect within the main story of Matthew and Luke's gospel. It's a clash of two kingdoms. And within uh, the paper, you will see that this is a clash of the kingdom of Rome and the kingdom of God. And it's also um, a wonderful, wonderful example of how precious and important this character Jesus is. And that is seen within his genealogy. And lastly, uh, the Christmas story is about the incarnation. So I want you to take 10 minutes or so and read the paper that was it that is within the resources of the module handbook of the main theological themes and background to the nativity i'm not going to read it to you in this summary uh, the summary is found within uh, the paper or you can see a summary of the summary on my blog which is www.chrisduffit.com and if you search on that blog for Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December, does it matter? And you'll see the article there. Now, I'm just taking you through uh, very quickly. Uh, the summary, but I just want to pick up on the genealogy of Jesus. Uh, the genealogy really does show the credentials of Jesus and the numerical way that the list is put together, as in this diagram. Uh, you'll see there are 14, so all the generations from Abraham to David, and then there are 14 from David until the carrying away into Babylon, well, 14 generations. And then lastly, from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ, again, our 14 generations. Michael Green, in his uh, commentary on Matthew, says that it shows flawless artistry. And in the un incarnation, it shows us that Jesus is God, God made flesh, Emmanuel which means God with us. Now, God would remain fully God and also become fully human and then submit himself to sin's painful consequence. Through this act of Jesus's incarnation, God's plan to rescue humanity would be finalised. Now, scripture explains it like this. The father made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, in the creative writing and communication with our guest lecturer, David, we had a wonderful treat, just showing us the way that 
uh, he summarizes the gospel story and also the books of the Bible. Uh, he <laughs> he made us laugh. Uh, he made us uh, analyze afresh the Christmas story. And uh, uh, David's notes hopefully uh, will be available on the module handbook resources. And I'll put his notes and PowerPoint slides there for you to have a look. In the practical, uh, just as a reminder, and for those who weren't able to make it, uh, we went into, uh, into Birmingham in teams of four. You were given two bags each and two pounds and two Christmas cards. And you were asked to write a simple message about Christmas in a card. Uh, you were asked to buy a gift or gifts and to give it away with some explanation. Can I just say, for those of you who did it, well done. I know for some of us it was immensely overwhelming. Uh, it was such a busy, crowded city centre. But yet, even though many of you uh, were told, no, thank you, uh, you were able to meet people and you persevered. The vehicle and the message one. In this uh, module, uh, we are looking really at the creativity and connecting that creativity really needs to help us bring and connect the good news of Jesus. So a mantra for the module, again, good news needs to be understood as good news. Otherwise, it's no news, which is bad news. Um, and I reminded you that connecting through creativity can't be copied. It needs to flow. What is really key when it comes to connecting is use what is in your hand. Don't do what I do. Do what you do. So this is what I do. I paint. This is a scene that I painted of the incarnation when God became flesh. This one is a scene about through him all things were made. That the very one who became a baby was also the very one that all galaxies and the whole universe was made through. Now we're going to play a game of Would You Rather. Uh, it's one of my favourite games. This book was given to me by my auntie uh, when I was six years old, Auntie Joy. Uh, would you rather an elephant drank your bath water, an eagle stole your dinner or a pig tried on your clothes or a hippo slept in your bed? You have to choose. Three, two, one. For me, it's an elephant drank your bath water. Uh, and then uh, I want you to choose. What would you rather do? Would you rather do what's on the left or the right? Just go through each one. Free hug, free sandwich. Choose. Dress up as a shepherd to give out gifts or shepherd people as a street pastor. What would you rather? Wrap people's presents or rap about Christmas. Hide baby Jesus stones or deliver Christmas hampers to families that will struggle this Christmas. Sing Christmas carols down the pub or talk to Carol behind the bar about your faith. Now, when it comes to using what's in our hand and using the gifts that we've got, we need to be aware of big vehicles, which have low content, small vehicles, which have high content. In other words, the high grace, low content, or uh, another way of looking at it is proclamation and demonstration. Well, we do you need to use a big vehicle that has very little explanation, but the vehicle shows it? Gene, are you someone that demonstrates or someone who proclaims? You need to know this because without it, our communication becomes clunky. It becomes borrowed. We need to know that the logos, the message, the reasoning needs to have the ethos, our credibility. It needs to flow and affect the pathos, the audience's feelings. Uh, so flow, integrity and true to you and your gifts are paramount when it comes to sharing the good news. Rhetoric to get what you want. 
and uh, what I'd like you to do is have a look. I'm not going to play for you to now, but if you would like to see the summary of the lecture, um, have a look at it. Now, how would you share the Christmas story through giving away a paintbrush? I bought 1,000 paintbrushes recently and I wanted to share the Christmas story. How would you do it? And then I'll tell you how I'll do it. So just take a moment to think about how you would share the Christmas story. For me, I ask people this question. Do you need to brush up? on the Christmas story this year and then I uh, gave them a postcard with a summary of the Christmas story God's very best gift for you now lecture five uh, some some groups of Christians do beer and carols I love it uh, designing a beer mat that communicates hope so I'm going to give you a blank beer mat this is my one that I designed with Richard Cohn design a number of years ago it's a baby boy don't forget to wet the baby's head this Christmas it is amazing how many people ask what baby what baby boy and then we're gonna leave uh, uh, for our lecture time and we left lots of time for discussion questions and prayer remember students if you need to get in touch with me please do email phone facebook messenger uh, if you need help with your assignments thank you for all those that have been in contact with me most of you have which is uh, wonderful i hope uh, this summary i want to end uh, by reading a poem to you and it's a prayer that you would be brave. I don't want to behave, I'm tired. Sick of stingy conforming, performing inside when outside spirit is pouring. I want to be a child who is brave. I don't want to behave, to blend in, melt in with the crowd. It is to rooftops I'm called to announce aloud. I long to be a dancer who is brave. Behave. To hide away with nothing to say to board a mud stuck mind i shout go away i long to be a follower of the brave i don't want to behave to tight fisted heartedness away from generous bliss to go kingdom stretching it is this that i am wooed to do to be a soldier who is brave i don't want to behave i will be brave god bless you and I hope you really enjoy doing this uh, practical and also the reflection. Remember, do get in touch if you need help with the portfolio or with the reflection on the portfolio and what you did. God bless you.